Okay guys, this is P2, uh, Prometheus 2, which is now known as uh, P2. Uh, it's quite a bit different. It looks the same as P1, but it's actually quite a bit different. Uh, the uh, wings and the tail are the primary differences. The fuselage is almost identical to P1. Uh, the whirlwind propeller on this one is the latest model. It's uh, kind of a scimitar shape. It's pretty awesome. Uh, these wings uh, I custom built. They were designed for me by someone else. But uh, the concept is a lot of people like to clip the wings on their airplanes to give them more roll rate. Both of my airplanes have more wing area because, you know, it's my philosophy for an airshow pilot. You want to fly closer to the ground, you need wing area to miss the ground. Uh, these wings are quite a bit different. They have a, a very drastic cutoff on the wing tip. And what that does is reduces the amount of wing area at the tip, which increases your roll rate. A lot of people like to clip the wings on airplanes to uh, you know, reduce the wing area out there and increase the roll rate. But for me, like I said, I like more wing area. Uh, if you're pointing at the ground, you want to miss the ground, you need wing to do that. And in an airshow airplane, it's really important. So in order to get the roll rate we want, like a clipped wing airplane, but keep the wing area, we uh, reduced all the wing tip area here. It's very little wing tip area. But then at the root, the wing is actually stretched. This is about uh, six or eight inches wider cord than a stock pits. So the overall effect is you have 13 more square feet of wing area than a stock pits. It's a lot of wing. And the other uh, cool thing about them is that all that air stretch is behind the spar, so it all becomes aileron. So these ailerons are huge, even compared to P1. Uh, P1 has two and a half or three times the aileron size of a stock pits, and this one is about 50% larger than that. So the wings are awesome. They roll really fast, but when you're on the uh, wing trying to pull a corner, they pull a corner really well. So well, actually, that I could do my entire show in the same space with this airplane and pull two or three less Gs than I do with P1. The, so the, the wings are awesome. The other big uh, difference on this airplane is the tail. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the tail on this airplane, the, uh, unlike P1, P1's horizontal stabilizer is stock pits. Uh, this one has been reduced almost in half, so much less horizontal stabilizer, which makes it uh, less, would make it less stable, uh, especially you know, when you're moving the elevator. The elevator is also huge. It's uh, probably more than twice the size of a stock pits. And the other cool thing about these, uh, this tail is that it has 45 degrees of deflection. That's about 10 or 15 degrees more uh, deflection than on uh, stock pits, and also uh, more than on uh, P1. I've adjusted the ratios on P1, so it has a little bit more down elevator than up elevator, but it's still overall the same throw. And the primary reason for this tail is because these wings, like I said, they have 13 more square feet of wing area. And a lot of the maneuvers that I do, I like to stall the wing and maneuver while the, while the airplane's stalled. In order to do that, I have to keep the nose up all the way around, basically stall the wing, stall the wing, stall the wing. And on uh, P1, with the tail that I have on it, I can do that pretty easily. But with these wings, since they have 13 more square feet of wing area, it, with, the, with the tail that I had um, on P1 on this airplane, it was just accelerating. I didn't have enough pitch authority to keep the nose high enough to keep the airplane stalled all the way around. So I had, a, had someone design this tail for me, and we actually had to change the geometry of the uh, uh, controls inside the fuselage to get this much throw out of it. It doesn't feel as good as P1, but uh, you know, it's a trade-off because the performance is so much nicer. Another thing I get a lot of questions about are these funny things that hang underneath the wings. Uh, they're called spades, and what they uh, do is uh, it's like power steering for the ailerons. Uh, you can adjust this, you can make them a certain size, you can slide them forward and aft on this uh, arm. You can make the arm different lengths and different angles. And it's all to make the ailerons feel the way that the particular pilot wants them to feel. Uh, and it's like power steering. Without these, it would take me two hands and a lot of effort just to move the ailerons. And with them, it becomes two fingers, just uh, barely any pressure at all to, to move the airplane. It's very light. But you can adjust it to have it anywhere in between, uh, just depending on what the pilot likes. And you'll notice that there's these uh, little washers on here, and they're very thin. But one little washer does it um, quite a bit of, of roll. It's amazing what a little washer will do. And those little adjustments are so that you can get the airplane where it'll fly hands off. We start with no spades, get the airplane to fly straight. And then you put the spades on. and. Uh, you can adjust them to get them to the feel that you want, and then you can put these little washers in here to get the airplane to fly straight. I like mine to be super light, uh, so these, these, uh, it feels like a sports car when you're flying it, but it's pretty awesome. 
And there's some other things on the airplane that um, are designed for feel as well to get the controls to be heavier or light, uh, which I'll show you. While we're talking about uh, aircraft feel, there's some other features uh, that you might notice. This is called an aerodynamic counterbalance. Uh, in this airplane, it has it on both the, horizontal, uh, the elevator, horizontal stabilizer, as well as the vertical stabilizer and rudder. Uh, the size of this will affect how the rudder and elevator feel as far as how heavy it is to push and how well it centers. Uh, you can make this larger or smaller depending on how you uh, want that to feel. Um, and the rudder on this airplane is perfect. You can see that this moves in the opposite direction. So the wind hits this and tries to help you push the rudder. Uh, and it also has a stabilizing effect. Um, it's pretty unusual to be able to fly with your feet on the floor in a pits that doesn't have this. In this airplane, I can actually put my feet on the floor and it tracks straight, primarily because of this feature. Uh, the same thing on the elevator. Uh, it had, there's a couple different ways that uh, you can uh, adjust your, the feel of an elevator. A stock pits has what's called a servo tab, and the, the, this tab actually moves the opposite direction of the uh, elevator, and uh, it'd be like when it comes up, it would push down. That actually helps you push the elevator up, helps the elevator go down. Uh, that's what's on P1. Uh, this airplane doesn't have that. This is just a stock um, fixed trim tab. Uh, so this, the, the feel is all done by this um, aerodynamic counterbalance. It goes opposite direction, same as the rudder. And uh, because of this, the size of this uh, elevator, we had some issues with, um, with it being pitchy. And you'll see there's a bunch of duct tape here on the front. Underneath this is a bunch of lead weight. And uh, you add the weight until you get the feel that you want. And it takes away some of the pitchiness. Just a few of the things that you do to trim a pits, uh, pretty much any airplane, to fly the way that you want it to. So I thought I would show you what's underneath the wheel pants. Uh, on P2, I have these uh, Behringer wheels and brakes. Uh, they're beautiful. It's a shame to cover them up, even though these wheel pants are gorgeous. Uh, Behringer makes um, brakes for motorcycles and race cars, and they're really phenomenal. It's a much better technology than uh, what's traditionally on a pits. Uh, they're actually much lighter than, um, than the factory units, and the uh, the power that they put out is, is incredible. I mean, they, I, I can't uh, say more about Behringer brakes. They're really awesome.